This video is about making a cardboard model for the rotating labyrinth. First you'll need the first four pages of the instructional document. and You want to cut out those four pages to include just the pictures. And then find a piece of cardboard. Uh, the only important thing with this cardboard is that you, ideally the first layer at least should be able to contain the, the entire picture without uh, crossing any creases or, um, or having any gaps. Then you'll uh, Take your glue stick or other glue, just don't let it on too thick, and glue the paper down. Being careful to make sure that the maze edges line, the maze edges line up. Uh, if there's any corners that aren't glued down, then they can cause the rest to come unglued, so it's best to make sure everything's glued. <clears throat> From there, we're going to cut it out of the cardboard. We're going to cut the small circles out first, including the small slivers of circles. The best thing for this is a steak knife or other serrated knife. You're going to want to be careful to use push cuts so you don't tear the paper. If you do tear the paper, it's not that bad. It's not that big a deal. You can put the uh, paper back on with a little bit of glue. But primarily pushing cuts, and if you hold the knife by the blade up close to your serrated edge, that also helps up near the tip. Helps you to have control and, and make the cuts happen without uh, without tearing too much and, and get the circles as circular as possible. Uh, you may find that the circles are different sizes as you cut. Um, that's not a big deal. You can trim a little bit more off the edges and get them all just a little bit too small, and they'll all fit just fine. So uh, yeah, scissors or, or a file you can drill the file the edges back down. Now you're going to want to glue it to a second piece of cardboard. The most important thing here is to make sure you get the glue in the thin areas between circles. There's a few circles that are really close to each other, and if you can get it in those thin areas, this helps re reinforce those little bridges so that the cardboard doesn't break. I used wood glue, so I had to let it uh, set for a little while. And then... Uh, once you've got that glued and the glue is dried, you're going to go ahead and you're going to cut the larger circles out. I would start with the second largest circle. It, um, it's just easier to cut that one out than to the wholesale than to cut it out of the, the larger circle. And then I would do the, the larger circle after that. So on this part, um, you see I'm marking with a pen where the crescents of the second largest circle come off. Just use one of the slivers from the previous steps to, to mark where those should come out. And you cut out the, uh, the full large circle. And you cut out the little crescents around the circle. These are the parts that can get picked up by that second largest circle as it rides its way around the, the largest circle. And so those pieces won't move unless the second largest circle comes to them and then turns. Now we're ready to put it all back in. So just fit all the pieces where they go. You'll be careful to put the boss key in the one closest to the center. And the other one that size neck near it. And the ones that have missing pieces, the circles that can be taken apart, the small circles should be on the outer edges. So now I'm just rolling to um, to turn the circles. So seven corresponds to uh, a five there. And it's a little bit hard to pop the small circles out. So what I do here is I, I cut out a little hole behind it so that you can just stick a finger in behind and, and pop it out. It's convenient to have them have the uh, the larger circle have a back underneath them so you can turn the larger circle without them falling out but that hole makes it easy to, to pop them out like that. So we're just going to do a few turns here. The important thing I want to demonstrate is when you take out the large circle and turn it, and also the second largest circle. So the large circle, you just got to keep track and make sure all the slivers end up in the right places if, if any of them slide off. And uh, the second largest circle it's the most complicated because it's got the, uh, it has a lot of chunks in it, inevitably, that, that can fall apart. So here it comes. We're doing the second largest circle. So I just take it out to the side, turn it. It always turns 180 degrees. The rest of them turn 90 degrees. And. 
then that's it. There you have it. Much better than the original.